Look at this. Get to Pakistan already. I want to know Ali's involvement in the coup. Right. Ali, do you know anyone who knows I mean Khan? Actually, let's start there. I do. Well, is that the is that the old Prezi? Yeah, the Prezi, Imran Khan. This, uh, this is the story. So give it um, to me. One Jordan's of, gonna <laughs> one of my friends. One of yeah. my friends. This is a true story. One of my friends. His dad was really good friends with Imran Khan. Now, mm. this was uh, I was promised to never tell the story publicly, but this is the story. So who gives a shit? What's sixty thousand? So Come Imran on. Khan has this image of like um, being a uh, you know like religious and shit, but apparently he like he drinks, which is. Uh, ah, which is like a that's little against the uh, you know, that's not yes I forgot they're yeah, not Catholic which, over there they're no but like, like it's wine. fine like, there's people that would do it you'd assume certain politicians do it but like yeah, yeah, he yeah. makes a big deal about how pious and religious he is and right, shit right 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 anyway so he's at my friend's house I'm not gonna take his name because I don't know this could actually yeah, become a story yeah take his name so we're at his <laughs> house right there's a car yeah so Khan and his dad they're in their room they're drinking mm-hmm. and then we me uh, and two of my friends one of them is baby. You, you remember baby? baby? That's the baby. Baby, baby, baby isn't the, the guy baby. whose dad is friends with Imran Khan, but there's this third guy whose name I'm not gonna take. So we're three. We're also Todd drinking. Law. We're also drinking. <laughs> Khan's. This is. This is <laughs> when uh, Khan was Khan not the prime him. minister. He was like in the opposition, <laughs> and his like car is parked right at the driveway. So my so one of my friend knows that his car is basically bulletproof and bombproof. Mm. And he tells Baby, who was drunk out of his hey, mind. By the way, he notes they got those little mirrors, right? What mirrors? Yeah, they <laughs> check under <laughs> the. Yeah, yeah. So, he, <laughs> so, so he, know, so the guy knows that uh, Imran Khan's uh, car is obviously bulletproof and and uh, bombproof. So he asks Baby, he's like, "Baby, if you can break this glass window, I'll give you twenty thousand rupees." How much is that? Uh, it's like two hundred dollars or right, something. Right. And so baby is like fucking punching this glass with his hands. <laughs> like, Great idea, bud. He, he's, he broke his hand almost. He's like he fucked up his wrist. Anyway, use your elbow. If and anything. on top of this, why does he need twenty grand? He's so rich. No, no, no. Two hundred dollars. So you tell someone two hundred. That's, that's two hundred dollars. He broke his hand for two hundred dollars. Yeah, one of the richest the men on earth. <laughs> baby, he's not the fucking one of the richest men on earth. <laughs> so his what, parents are right. His parents are old. Uh, like his grandfather was an admiral, so they have their. In terms of the social standing of the country, they're really up. But in terms of they're old money, which mm. means that they don't have they don't any have money. money. <laughs> they don't have any money. Anyway, so like uh, th- that was the one anecdote of Imran Khan that I just remember. Never met him, but he but was happened? in a room. What happened? What happened with the? Did he break the glass? No, he broke his hand, Easy. and then he was later told that it's actually like it's ball proof. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Why is every story you have from Pakistan unbelievably violent? <laughs> it's not unbelievably violent. Come on, violent. bomb-proof window, someone breaks their hand while another rich man laughs at their misfortune, being like, you fucking idiot. That's hilarious. Oh, my God. Amazing. Amazing. It was all the elements. It was funny. He was so drunk, he couldn't realize that it was just... <laughs> <laughs> that, okay, that, that explains more. Um, that explains Anyway, more. so uh, what's happened with Imran Khan is, and by the way, all my friends hate me. For this opinion, because right now, if you go to like Pakistani Twitter or Facebook, literally everyone is going hashtag I, I stand, stand with, with Khan. I stand with Skipper. So what's happened? Why Skipper? Oh, uh, cricket because name. he was a fucking cricketer and shit. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so like it, this is a very unpopular opinion, but in urban city areas, if you go to rural areas, people don't really like Imran Khan. So what's happened is that what you need to know is centrally yeah. is that. To be the prime minister or to form government in Pakistan, you, have to you really bet. need to have you need to have <laughs> the military on your side. <laughs> That's actually That's really amazing. Okay, be you have to be amazing <laughs> at cricket, and the military has to support you. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. you can form government. No, what's the actual reason I cut you off? What was it? Yeah, but, come on, like, am I wrong? Oh you. shit! You weren't joking. You weren't joking. You military joking. is very strong, right? And so, Whew. what yeah. essentially happened was that Imran Khan, when he was when he was coming into power. Mm. He did not have nearly the amount of political support mm. that you require to win an election. So he kept losing elections. Yeah. And he kept saying that I lost the election because the elections are rigged, which was kind okay. of untrue. However, so the military military came to a point where they were like, maybe we should try this guy out. The rest of the opponents, it was like a two-party system where like one party came into power, the other party came into power, mm. and the country didn't progress. And the military is now facing some serious issues in terms of their own budget. 
Right. So they were like, we need to get Imran Khan into power somehow. Yeah. So they basically rigged the elections for him. <laughs> and uh, and so maybe they maybe it. they didn't rig the elections in the sense of like getting people to like vote incorrectly. But what they would do is, let's say there was uh, an electorate where Khan's uh, guy mm. was supposed to be losing because the polls were against him. Mm. They would randomly uh, get the guy arrested on corruption charges. <laughs> So the opponent, so Khan's man would end up winning because the opponent is just in jail or is disqualified because apparently he's corrupt. Look, at least our parliament isn't as tough as Pakistan's. That's all I'll say. Yeah. So he was. So he that's was. Things in perspective. Yeah. He was. He got elected on let's just say dubious terms. He was basically being supported by the military. Yeah. But unfortunately, Khan is a moron in the sense that he thinks he is this extremely popular leader. He's that not. everyone in the country loves. And he's not. No, it's a very, it's a group of people that like him, which is urban middle class people. Hey, Ali, do you have polling? Yes. Okay, what's urban the polling? Middle class. So what? So what, is it the same thing that like the 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 rural lower socioeconomic people are voting for their nationals, their national leader? Kind of. Is that what's happening? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty. Yes, much. yes. Essentially. But, but but also, what about the poor of Karachi? Do they like him? I don't think they would, yeah, particularly in the current climate, because economically the country is also doing pretty badly, which is also one of the reasons why he got ousted, because the military was like, uh, he's, not, he's not good at managing the economy. And is he kind of like labor equivalent? Well, no. He, you, you'd he's like maybe Rush like Perot. center right. Who the fuck's that? What's that? He's that guy that was just like, I'm a billionaire, and I don't think these two parties that represent the interests of billionaires represent me specifically <laughs> enough. I am running for president. Oh, my God. And he almost won, too. Fuck. Um, but, Ali, how's he polling before all this? Well, before this, he was like, look, I don't, I don't trust Pakistani polling. We'll find out when the elections happen, and the elections are going to happen soon. And my guess is that Khan is going to lose badly because he's not going to have the military supporting him. Right. And he's going to claim that the election was rigged. But and he's right. No, he's not right. <laughs> he's right. He like just he's isn't rigged in his favor. Yeah, yeah, but that's... But that doesn't correct. mean that the military is supporting the other side. The military at this point is like, they all suck, so we're just going to stand back. Okay, so he's in a position where he could win. This actually might be Pakistan's first free election. Second. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Second. Holy <laughs> shit. Uh, was he was he actually The first free election he? and the only free election was in 1971 that Fuck. the results were so bad that they could never do it. You know what happened in the first uh, first free elections? Is that Paul Keating? This is when the 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 elections were won by a man called Mujibur Rahman who ended up being the prime minister of Bangladesh because the Bangladesh had actually won. What was then East Pakistan had won. Because the elections were fair. But people in West Pakistan were like, we're not going to fucking let these Bangladeshis, well, not Bangladeshis at the time, but these Bengalis, yeah, control all of the country. So they were like, fuck that, no more free elections, and also you don't get to be. In fact, they got so pissed off by that, they ended up having to form their own country. <laughs> anyway, a little bit of trivia. That's but, fucking hell. But the, hectic. The, yeah, it's a little bit more hectic than Gough Whitlam, I'll say that. Yeah. But ain't, the, the problem yeah. is the reason why I don't, I never supported or... Wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Can you just tell me about the polling before we go in? So even though you don't trust it, what's uh, it at? I think he's at like uh, 30%. Uh, pop, uh, and if you're going to win an election in Pakistan, what do you need? 35% would be... Oh, know, shit. He's pretty popular. But I don't, I don't trust those polls because most of the people that vote are city dwellers and they over like if you do his a vote, poll on Facebook, he's gonna win every vote because most people that use Facebook like him. But that's yeah. not voting, the majority of the is population. Is voting mandatory over there? No, voting is mandatory. You know what USA. else? USA. You know what else? I think because I've uh, the very limited coverage that I've seen of it. Every Pakistani woman with a British accent that is reporting on this. They are all rolling their eyes at Imran Khan with this sort of, this is very silly. He really should just step aside. <laughs> well, at that point, dude, he really should have just stepped aside because he was pulling a Trump. He, the no confident motion means that like if the majority of people in the parliament don't have faith in the prime minister, then you have to go. That's just a democratic process. Right. And he wasn't, he wasn't willing to accept that. And he made this thing about the conspiracy that, uh, uh, America is trying to uh, do a regime change because they don't like his opinion on Russia. 
That is true. However, they're not actually doing a regime change. They don't like his opinion on Russia, and they would like for him not to be the prime minister. But that's a different thing from saying that they are orchestrating a regime change. This is why I'm telling you that, and I predicted that this would happen because, dude, there's this book which I've told Jordan a million times. It completely changed my understanding of how Pakistani politics work. It's the Dave Grohl autobiography. The Dave Grohl autobiography, <laughs> funnily written by a British white man. All right. Sometimes you need a neutral perspective, but but the point is that he he. No, Dave Grohl was British. <laughs> his name's Anatole Levin. It's called Pakistan a Hard Country. Oh fuck! I love is, that title. Which is that is a cool title. The, isn't it? I think it's an authority on understanding politicals. And if, if anyone read that, man. gives That's, a shit, yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah. It is a very interesting book. Um, Hard but either way, country. the one thing that you realize from that book is that Pakistan does not function like Western countries because most of the Western countries are very um, they're, uh, they're not as divided. They're more like in Australia. You can theoretically get most Australians to support one candidate if your platform was good enough. Mm-hmm. You cannot do that in a country like India, where it's not just one nationality that lives there, but there's like multiple nationalities that speak mm. different languages mm-hmm. that have completely different perspectives. There's regional powers yeah. that contribute to a federal election, which is why you can't have an extreme authoritative figure or an authoritative system, because most people. Vote based on their clan loyalties. Right. So if if I am a particular clan, let's say my surname is something, I am always going to vote. Grohl, for instance. For Grohl, let's say I'm from the <laughs> Grohl clan, then I'm always going to vote mm-hmm. for someone that represents the Grohl interests. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, it's getting very obscure. <laughs> and if and these these collectively. <laughs> The, all of these different clans and their policies collectively uh, vote and they form uh, the National Assembly seats. Yeah, yeah. Now, the problem is that because there's no common identity, like Australian or whatever, uh, all of these votes are so dis- disparate that you can't consolidate and do massive reform. Why don't reform. they change their government to be more, like, local-based? Well, that's the thing. And that was something that Imran Khan was not doing. He couldn't understand the basic... He was he was thinking that Pakistan is like any other country, like yeah. like it's like yeah, France, I get where it. like yeah, I get it. but it's yeah. not, and yeah. your popularity is going to erode if you don't serve these clan based interests. Yeah. So uh, the point is that if Pakistan was ever to succeed, the only way you can do it is through a policy of consensus, where you get different regional powers to come on the same page, and basically give them a piece of the pie, mm. and you basically work for a collective interest where everyone's getting paid. Khan's policy was that these other people who I have to traditionally cater for are corrupt, which he's not wrong, are useless, incompetent. So I'm going to exclude them, just form an alliance with the military, and I'm going to like dictatorially right. uh, make this country a better functioning country. Right. Which was a dead end. It was a recipe for disaster because power just does not work like that. Mm. You're eventually going to be thrown out. So you, he That's was, a hard he was, thing to navigate. <laughs> he was just putting his opponents in jail, which was yeah. a stupid thing to do in the long run because they're eventually you're, there's going to be enough people that don't like it, which is what... And twi- like... Maybe twenty percent of his entire pa- his own party mm. went and went across the aisle to the opposition because oh, he was shit. So that was my initial. That, that's something that I've been trying to explain to most people in Pakistan that this strategy is not going to win. This mm. strategy is going to do fuck all for the country. Yeah, which is why I was against Imran Khan. So when he was being ousted, I was like, yeah, who cares? Like, good. Mm. You're just wasting time over here because you're eventually going to have to realize what he is doing has been done by all the major parties at one point, mm. as well in the history. And they have realized, after doing that, that that strategy is wrong. He was the last one, because he's a new sort of politician, to realize this. And if, in future, he comes back to power, then he would actually be a potent force, because then he has to realize how... Now he probably realizes how politics works. Yeah. Either way, so look, the and he also really roughed up the feathers with the military. The military, he, because he anymore. when he became the prime minister, at one point he started thinking that I am the elected representative. 
these military personnel, these chi- these army, like the chief of army staff, I I am constitutionally I have the power to control them. I should be calling the shots, and he started flexing this power, okay. not knowing that the military can fucking throw him out. Mm. So hubris, and they did. Hmm? Hubris killed Imran Khan. Yeah, well, but like yeah, okay. Uh, just on the note though, would you vote for him in the next election? Well, it depends on what his new understanding of politics is. At this point, I wouldn't. So Imran Khan, in future could be a potent political force. And this is what I'm saying. So you know how I explained to you these clan-based lo- loyalties that people vote based on? This is mostly a rural phenomena. So right. as the country urbanizes, so let's say if Pakistan's GDP is consistently like what China was for the next five to 10 years, then you would have massive urbanization where people would leave rural areas and move to urban areas because they're working in factories and, you know, all the stuff that comes with living in urban areas. And they are going to lose ties with their the, the, the clan-based system that they vote for is going to eventually diminish if they become super urbanized. Then they would become a country like Australia, where most people have this collective Australian identity and vote based on that. But that is too far away because Pakistan is too poor at the moment. We don't have an urban population big enough to actually control the country. So maybe in the future, Khan could become a potent force. But considering he's 70, he's it's 70? probably too late. Yeah. And is he being, like, the Whitlam thing? Like, is he, is he being uh, out? Like, what's going to happen? Yeah, so that's what's the, currently happening? So my opinion is that a lot of these, uh, the Imran Khan's party, they're barking up the wrong tree over here. They think, they're saying that this is a conspiracy that the U.S. has orchestrated for a regime change. Now, he is right in the sense that the U.S. hates his guts Mm. because he has always been shitting on the U.S. The U.S. also doesn't like the fact that he has a very neutral view on Russia and Ukraine. Um, However, the U.S. does not nearly have the power to do a regime change in Pakistan. The only entity that has the power to do a regime change in Pakistan is the military or domestic politics. Yeah. So... The fact it's the fact that he thinks that America is behind him being right, dethroned right. is incorrect. Right, he is right in the sense that they would not want him. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. The reason why he's being dethroned is because most of the people in the country, or at least most of the parliamentarians in the country, have lost confidence in him that he can govern. That he can govern. Yeah. Okay. He's a he's a very ideological man, which is a big problem in a country like Pakistan, where entire politics is based on compromise. You, he is very ideological. He he thinks on. He, he's kind of like Jordan, actually. Jordan would love him if Jordan was in his cabinet. I do love he him. would be the one who's like right. suggesting him all the unconstitutional things. Because <laughs> like Jordan, Khan thinks of the world as good versus bad. Right. And so he's on the good side. Yeah. Everyone else that is his opponent is on the bad side. So it's fair play to put them in jail because they're mm. working for destruction. They're all cheats. They're corrupt. Right. All of that shit. Yeah. Which is a very simplistic understanding. Because they might be engaging in corrupt activities, but their end goal is the same as you. They would like Pakistan to also progress. This is, do they, though? This is complicated. They do. They do. The world is not good versus evil. The world is... <laughs> according to you. <laughs> according to me. Which is, why, which is why I think if you were... You obviously have If you were in Pakistan, you would support... And you would be one of my friends who was, like, hating on me for shitting on Khan at the moment. Oh, yeah, I would. Well, I hate on you now, and I barely understand yeah. the situation. Because yeah. I just... I, dude, I, I see that man, and I think there is a man of integrity. You know? And, like, and, and the very little pieces of information that I understand about him, I think... He's actually trying to move Pakistan out of its But he's situation. doing it in the wrong way. His strategy but is, is wrong. Is there a right way to do yes, it? Yes, there is. And the right way is very slow time and consuming, slow, and you have to entertain people. Khan has this thing of like, I am better than other people. Like, I am better than all these corrupt Dude, assholes. Dude, let's that be honest, though, he them. is. He might be, but that's not going to take you anywhere. Yeah. You, I understand that you yourself are a very. Like, he, he, he hasn't made money. He is like, he is. An ex cricketer who lives like a very poor life, like not a poor life, but by choice though. By choice, he lives. Uh, he, uh, what I'm saying is like he's not making money through corruption and kickbacks, but that's not life. enough to actually for the country to progress because most countries that have progress have done so with the corruption. 
I don't have problems with corruption, at least in that country. I have corruption in Australia because dynamics are different. But I have, I don't have problems in that corruption as as long as you also do the work, make some money on the side, but make sure the work also gets done. The problem mm. comes when it's only corruption and no work is being done. Mm, mm, so mm. Uh, Khan needs to like move away from this extreme corruption view that he has, where he thinks the in, the biggest problem in Pakistan is corruption. The biggest problem in Pakistan isn't corruption. The biggest problem in Pakistan is that it's too divided for a centralized economic policy to last for too long. People don't trust each you are, other. You are fucking right. But come on, don't you think that he's the only one that's trying to do that? He's not. He's he's trying. What he's doing is trying to bulldoze the situation, where all those people that are creating those problems, those uh, those divided communities, he's trying to like just fucking bulldoze over them, create an alliance with the military, and just dictatorially do it. Which won't work in Pakistan because Pakistan, they again, they would As revolt. They've, they've done it before, and they've and this and case in point, he's not a prime minister anymore because of the strategy. The way you fix Pakistan is to fucking be nice to all those people who you hate. Right. Get them on your side. Explain to them. Build trust with them, and get them to be like, okay, with this economic policy, you will benefit. I will benefit, and everyone will. Benefit. Ali, surely he's not in that position. He's from a new party that he forged himself. And he has two opposition parties that have this born-to-rule mentality of, like, who's this upstart? And they would be both working to destroy him. There's no way that you're going to get them to work. Because he's also putting them in jail. So they have I don't think it's just that, man. I honestly think that they would be wanting his blood. And I think that they also have that kind of thing of just like, okay, it can exchange between us two, but what is this new political threat to us? Yeah, but they would new, want that gone. Sure, but that new political threat is also not going to be beneficial for the country anyways. So I kind of Dude, understand like, Okay, okay, I really want to be talking to your friend, though, that was saying that like the policies that Imran Khan are enacting are very vital to Pakistan, because that was his but view But those policies aren't too different from what the opposition is going to do. The opposition isn't going to come and do something radically different. They're probably going to do exactly what Khan was doing. So, really? Yeah. Um, there's no big debate on how that shit works. The other thing is this whole idea that Khan has that, like, you know, the West is uh, the West is really keeping us low. IMF is doing all of this shit. It might be true, dude, but like you can only sort of run on that if you have a strong economy. Your economy is bankrupt. You need IMF loans. You're not in a position to be telling U.S. to fuck off. Your biggest trading partner is U.S. Your second biggest trading partner is the EU. Don't make enemies of them. Keep your head low. That's what it takes. You've got to eat your ego sometimes mm. and just accept it. Like, and if you play the long game like the Chinese did, Chinese 40 years ago weren't threatening the U.S. They were like, there will be a time when we're able to do it. And they are at that time when they're able to do it. He's doing everything prematurely. It's all about like self-respect. Wait, wait. So you Poor don't pay... people don't have self-respect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you you don't pay anything that he has done for the country over the last what four years. You don't think he's made any move that would be uh, you know distinctly Imran Khan's. You think that any other politician would be doing exactly what he'd be doing in that situation? Pretty much. I suppose he has an uh, he has he's he stresses more on climate change. But the rest of them aren't opposed to climate change. Again, this is a poor country that is affected by climate change. So there's a bipartisan consensus that we need to do something about climate change. He used he's the, one of the pioneers that has done something about it. There's like they're replanting trees. They're they're doing a lot of stuff in that regard. He's not going to do he the opposition isn't kind of going to come and do anything radically different to him. But hopefully God, they're not. Man, they're going like, to make less enemies, and maybe this economic pl- reform continues. Okay, you don't even pay his spirit of trying to give Pakistan kind of like its own independent footing in the world. Not yet. You're too poor. You're too weak to do that right now. Yeah, you I know that. I know that. But you, you like you know. The fact that he dared defy the odds. <laughs> I think it was. I think it's stupid to defy dare the odds. Defi- it, it makes sense for Xi Jinping to defy the odds. It does not make sense for fucking Pakistan to defy the odds at the moment. But all I just remember is when we were there, the finance minister had a very good understanding of the country's economics and what its challenges were mm-hmm. and where he wanted to move the country. Yeah, but then how we do you achieve to the it? Former president. 
and you were just like, dude, this guy can barely spell his name. Uh-huh. That's the thing. Like, and a lot of you know what a lot of people in Pakistan, like a lot of my friends are advocating for this. They're saying because Imran Khan's been outed, and they know that a lot of the people that are against him are poor rural people. They're tr- they're literally suggesting that you should not be able to vote unless you have a university degree. <laughs> Holy shit. Fuck yeah. Holy shit. Which is ridiculous. That's assuming that they don't know what their interests are. They know what their interests are. You know what your interests are. They just happen to be different. Man, look. I just wish that I could hear one person prosecute the case for Imran Khan. But all I'm hearing is you pretty much have the same view as the BBC. No, my... Look, I, I'm not against Imran Khan in the sense of, like, uh, he should be outed, he's been uh, extremely incompetent, and all those talking points. My talking point is, my entire argument is, and it was when he joined power, that his strategy to to take Pakistan forward is wrong, and is going to... is gonna You're going to eventually end up with dead ends. And so that's why I'm not at all fussed about him going. I'm kind of happy, because I'm like... G- give me this, give me this. What would you do if you were the Prime Minister of Pakistan? I would try to not put people in jail. I would try to form relations with them, try to form a national government kind of thing that all players that have the power to disrupt the plan, all of them come together and have a shared economic plan. Where So your understanding of politics for Pakistan is kind of just like they don't need a Gough Whitlam, they need a Joe Biden. Well, they need... You know who they need? I was actually thinking about that. They need... Um, what was his name? Uh, the guy... Uh, the guy who came up with like, Medicare and shit in America. You know the, de- the Democrat who was... Uh, not LBJ. Too, LBJ. We need an LBJ in Pakistan. We, d- we don't need a Lincoln. There's a time when you need Lincoln. But this is not that time. Mm. If, let's say, uh, fucking India invades Pakistan... Then you don't need an LBJ. You need a Lincoln. You, in fact, need someone like Imran Khan. If if Imran Khan was in a position, uh, what Zelensky is right in right now, great. He is the perfect guy for that. But Pakistan does not need that guy right now. Pakistan needs someone that is like crafty, is able to make alliances, get people that hate each other to get on the same page for a little bit, and that's the only way forward here. Do you think that his party is going to disintegrate when he's not the head of it? There is a possibility. If his party emerges, if his party is able to recoup and somehow gain power again, then it will be a potent political force. Because right now, his entire strength came from the military backing him. And as soon as the military backed off, he was fucking tossed out. That's not how you bring mass reform. I don't know why this is, man. I really don't. Maybe I'm just like those people that have just found my channel that are like, can you tell me why Labour is better than Liberal? It's just like... No, I, I answer don't. the question. Oh, fuck. I've done it so many times. <laughs> no, that's all I get. I just turn into a baby and tantrum, right? right? Fair enough. Because yeah. it's just so understanding of it. But, mm-hmm. man, I have asked you so many questions about Pakistan's politics. I still don't get it. It's too far. It's too complicated. It's too complicated. Yeah. There's, it's too dense. Bogged. Yeah. It's like, and, and like, it's just Shit. this endless thing of just like no one does anything different like it's it's amazing to me because i just cannot get that map out of my head that no parties are different and this, they do okay, different this things. is in a nutshell the basic crux of how pakistan's political economy works there are different clans <clears throat> that try to get a representation in the government only to extract yeah, so they resources can yeah, I know out that of part. it I know that part. Yeah. and weaken the state and, uh, and strengthen their own sort of... Plan. Yeah, so what they would do is, they, as soon as they would come into power, they would give jobs to people within their clan so that they get money from it. But these people that are getting jobs, they're not competent at all. They're not good for... the. So they just extract it. They just keep getting more and more, where the state becomes weaker and the private individuals get stronger. And you're saying that Imran Khan is no different to that model. He's just giving it to different. But the thing so is, Imran like, Khan is like trying a bunch to stop of technocrats this. are on Imran Khan's side. Yeah, but technocrats have no fucking power. They're not the people that are going to stop this. Extraction. No, no, I know, but, but he is trying to extract Pakistan's power and put it in their hands. What he needs to do is 
to get the big wigs. Am I right about that or am I wrong? He, he's trying to do that. He's trying I'm, to do I'm not, that. I'm definitely not saying that. He's trying to understand it, yeah. He, he is, he's trying to do that. But the way he's doing it is not going to work. So what he needs to do is, instead of alienating all of these people that are extracting resources and putting them in jail, what you need to do is convince their leadership that the way you make big money is to not extract every single thing that you can see. Give them assurances that in the grand scheme of things, we're going to increase the pie and your share will become bigger. Well, I mean, you know, the Labor Party can't convince the oligarchy in Australia to do that. Yeah, so but, I really don't think they have do, a shot in Pakistan. But usually when the system becomes so bad that it just keeps eating itself to the point where it will collapse, the oligarchy is more susceptible to understanding this thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's the opposition parties, both the big parties realize this. The leaderships are trying to fix it, but they are they are they're unable to do it because there's just such trust deficit amongst the other players. Okay. So you need to get everyone on board, and you you need to allow regionalism, where one party that controls one area that this is your area, we will give. We're not going to fuck with you over here. However, these central things don't fuck with that. And you actually have faith in the gentry of Pakistan. That they'll see reason in that. Yeah, well, they'll see reason in that, but I don't have faith that they'll be able to do it. This is a very difficult part. It's hard to get everyone on the same page. You under like you can imagine because people there's so many different people with so many vested interests. It's hard to keep everyone on board. But there's that's the only way out of it. Okay, what does Gnome Packy think? I don't know what the fuck that guy. Thinks. <laughs> this is Give me a guess. Give me a guess. What's his? <laughs> He's, pro he, he's probably he's probably like <laughs> they are all they are all corrupt they are all bad people there is no hope for this country See and he's right which is pretty much your response except no. for you're just being like but there is hope there is what hope, is the hope? But, uh, the goodbye <laughs> there's <laughs> hope it's a it's a it's a you, you know what? I'll get there yeah, I'll get the solution you can't find shortcuts go for it <clears throat> fundamentally change how the government works abolish the whole government the whole country is run in in regional like you know, like essentially councils, regional areas. Like fiefdoms. They're, yeah, they, exactly. They all run their own mini countries based on their clans and whatnot. And they all interact with each other for trade and stuff, for, you know, cinnamon, I guess. And Yes, and vital artery. The spice. Uh, and then it'll function. But the problem is that all of those regional places, they're just going to keep all the money to themselves and the federal government is going to be really weak. And the so military is not going to want that because that puts them in a very susceptible position to Yeah, idiot. the other thing Fuck is dude, the military hates man. regionalism because they're, they're a federal institution. The military. The military. And rightfully so. They really should be in Pakistan. Yeah. Oh, because no one will pay the taxes for, to them. Yeah, because the, why would people... Dude, they you they, would they have really have do need to up... What? Look, I am always of the opinion that the uh, military in the West is unbelievably bloated. Well, I don't think it's bloated enough in Pakistan. You know, the military like is really the only competent really? institution in the country. So maybe they should just run the show, like in. The well, they, they tried. They do half right? of the history work? because they had the same exact issue that Imran Khan was doing. They thought that because they have all this power, they would declare martial laws where the chief of army staff would become the president, mm. and they would try to do a dictatorship. But the problem was the same. Mm. They try to exclude others and fix the country, but you cannot fix the country without getting all those people that you hate on board with your plan. Hey, because they have enough power to dethrone you, Ali, even Ali, if you're the military. Uh, is, is, it a, is it a similar scenario in India or no? Similar, but because they've been like growing since the 90s at a much faster pace than uh, Pakistan has, their urban population is much bigger, which means someone like Modi could actually have power. Right. And so Modi is trying to do exactly what Imran Khan is doing, but he is able to do it in a better way because there's a larger population base that supports him. And he's a cunt. Well, that's a different story altogether. But they're trying to do the same thing. India, again, has the Moody. same problems, but they're in a slightly better position <laughs> than Pakistan is. Dude, I think, man, look, man you know what? If, if Pakistan's neighbour was just Afghanistan 2 instead of India. Uh, Miss probably has the right idea. Mm. Why? Oh, because it's because like you need to have... If you've got like weak nations on either yeah. side, why not just turn yourself into fiefdoms? Yeah, it probably yeah, they, would work a lot better. Yeah, but it won't work because of India. Yeah, it's like 
the whole threat thing, right? That's the reason why the military can't. Yeah, the military. The Fuck, re- maybe the solution is for it to actually just get morphed into India. Shit. <laughs> maybe you should. Maybe they should rip, tear down I mean, that it, wall, Modi. You know. I think. Look, maybe tear it down. like the the ideal wet dream of what America wants. It's kind of like at the point that. You know how Dershowitz is always arguing this, and it's kind of it's it's so infuriating to Chomsky because you can't really argue against it. Where he's just like, "Man, Pakistan lost, man, just accept it." Uh, that, like, and he just gets to that point. Maybe it's kind of like that with Pakistan, and it's only being kept alive because of this nuclear conflict between the two. You, but like, maybe they kind of Pakistan is also being kept alive because that system that I'm talking about, the extraction of the state, is a very very good system. Good system, not in the sense of like it's good for the country, but Efficient. it's good for uh, societies to remain stable. Because it is through that. the extraction of money, you're actually making sure that all this population that wouldn't have jobs have enough food to eat. Right. By taking it away from the from the institutions and the structure Dude, of government itself. Pakistan is a fucking old school idea of a nation state. It's it? ba- it's a feudal system. It's, it's a feudal it's, system. It's a feudal system. Well, it's straight up feudal system with nukes. A feudal system with nukes. Ex- How terrifying. It's like it's, it's literally feudal. in a pyramid where like you've got the top feudal lord, which is a family. The Kang. The family. Then you've got at the bottom more families and then more families and then more families and they're all extracting resources from the state and distributing it rather equitably amongst their clans and their families. So it keeps it keeps the system... Uh, that's why Pakistan doesn't collapse because this system is actually pretty good at making sure that the country doesn't collapse. But it's bad at making sure that the country progresses. Advances. Yeah. Right. That's, that, that says it all. Which is why people have been predicting that Pakistan is going to collapse for the last fucking 60 years and it never has. Hey, And it never will. Can, can you give me this? What would Imran Khan say to your points? He was like, you're defending like these corrupt people. They're, they're cancer. The only way you can beat cancer is by cutting it off. He's a big picture guy. That's what he would say. No, he's he is right. He's kind of just like, dude, it is two fundamentally different world views. And there's like, I think he's... Don't think he's wrong, man. He, he keeps saying that wrong. if you if you do what I say, this is like treating cancer with a Panadol. You're gonna get mm. relief temporarily, but the only way to get the only way to fix yourself is to cut the cancer off. It's an impossible maths equation. <laughs> There's so Which many is factors. Something I disagree it's, with. Dude, it's, it's it's impossible. Worse than maths. It's worse. It's politics. Yeah, man. It's not a science. It's a straight up art. Yeah. And the thing is, as well, like, yeah, I, I don't think Ali's wrong having heard his opinion about it now, like, fleshed out. Mm. No, yeah, it makes sense. But, dude, I don't think that Imran Khan's wrong because you're all, if you think about it, you're kind of being a bit of an idealist as well in saying that, you know, this is the way you could get this system together. But you know what? But I also, also say this Ali, is the only I, way. Give, give, it's the only way, but also give me this. I don't think that you're probably the first person to have thought about this that has actually held power in Pakistan. I'm sure there has been a bunch of people before that have thought exactly. In what fact, you both think. the opposition parties agree with me, right? Because they know they spent like fucking four decades in politics. They now understand how it works. Mm. Both of them, by the way, were thinking exactly what Imran Khan did at some point in their careers. But throughout their throughout their life, where they've had like beasts with the military, good relations with the military, to, they have now figured out that this is the only way. To, the other thing that needs to happen is that the military needs to fucking back off from politics. Yeah, well, that's not happening. Which is... some. <clears throat> it's it's also a requirement. They need... They have... They have, like... They have very important stay on matters of foreign policy. They should always be uh, consulted. But in terms of the economy, they don't know how to do it. Do you think that naturally Pakistan will urbanize and this will sort itself out? Naturally, it will urbanize. But the question is, will it sort itself out? If it goes by default, there's a possibility that it won't. Because, I mean, that was the collapse of feudal systems. Yeah. Pakistan and is... fucking Venice, just yeah. in case. But <laughs> in order to, like, fucking promote <laughs> yourself from the feudal system, you need rapid economic growth. Yeah, go which is not going to happen the way it is currently. Because most of the money is being... Well, you need it if you're thinking about, like, elites. decades. But if you're thinking centuries, it will... Well, centuries change. is too long of a game. No one is like sort of. No, no, but no I'm just saying that the, that the general trend of that society is that one day it is going to move out of this gridlock. 
It's like a different problem the that one developed nations face. But if that is stuck in 1103, eventually what a it becomes year. 1776. <laughs> the only thing that could actually do that is climate change. Oh, fuck. Yes. Climate change could really upset this whole ratio because if the if with climate change and water scarcity there would be a point where Pakistan would not be able to function the way it is functioning at the moment. And that's the dead end, where like if you don't change the system, then you perish. And I think that's the only thing that could potentially either make them perish or get into a system where, you know, you... Because the, the issues are so basic, Jordan. Like, in terms of even water, the, 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 the provinces of the state that are lower uh, on, the, on the river belt mm. don't trust... The, the province that is higher to build a dam, which is an extreme... So Dude, because fear, though. The, because water is being wasted, what you really need, every expert, economic expert, would say, you need to fucking conserve water. You're wasting too much water. Kind of like what Australia does. Australia is mm. really good at it. Like, there's simple things like... No, we're not. We have exactly the same compared problem. Compared to Pakistan, we're much better at it. But we yeah, have yeah, the same problem. Obviously, obviously you have the same problem. Scarcity. Hey, here's the question, though. Did Imran Khan end up building those dams? He cannot! Because he needs to get all everyone on board for that yeah, kind of so thing. So it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Hmm. So you need to get the, you know what the else province well, in the south to trust that even if the north builds the dam, not that happening. when there is water required in the south, they will release the water. <laughs> They're not going to do right that. Right now, there's no trust. You need to build trust like that for the Jesus. country to grow. I'm so and see, here's the other thing as well. If you are basing a system off of trust, it's only going to be a matter of time before someone breaks that trust. And then you're in a terrible yeah, situation. Yeah, but the geography, the geography of the country is such that the north is the only place where you can have those dams. You can't have dams in the south. Yeah, I know, but like, you know, it, it only takes one person to realize, oh, we've got dams now. Now we're keeping it. Mm. Mm. That's the end. Well, that's th that. There's there's an issue over there. A lot of my southern province friends would say exactly what you're saying. How the fuck do I trust it? Dude, Give me it's one exactly what the fucking finance minister had on his board. I'm sorry I keep bringing it up, but he's right. Too many people. That is the problem of Pakistan. To me. That is a big issue. The, right. the population is expected to be 400 million by 2050. This is a, already a water-stressed country. Can you imagine? And with climate it's of, change, it's only going to get bad. The indicators that, like, are horrible for the future. dirt. And also, on top of that, Pakistan is easily... The worst country I've ever stepped foot in. I mean, it was look, it was it was funny. It had its pluses. It definitely had that its pluses. Fish looked good. The, the guy who cooked it, you told me, but it looked good. Oh, yeah, oh that was amazing. Yeah, that was the best fish I've ever had in my life. There you go. Brought over by the British. What that I was like tilapia. That's British shit. trout. Yeah, right. Which is now running in Pakistani water. But anyways, it's not all bad. Okay, it's yeah, not all right. Bad. So it's just the Murray cod. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. Um. But yeah, it's struggling. It's a struggling country. It's yeah. yeah, I'll tell you what, like there's as you said, or, there's nothing that puts things into perspective more. It than is fascinating thinking about the predicament of Pakistan. Yeah, it is fascinating. It sort of sounds like June. <laughs> well, everything does. Everything does, I suppose. <laughs> is it like June? A little uh, bit. It's very uh, depressing. Well, yes, actually, the deputy prime minister is called Paul Atreides. So. <laughs> <laughs> and he will save it is like June, though. There's all these separate clans. They're all fighting for resources. It's yeah. June. And it said, I rode the mighty British trap. <laughs> <laughs> Put his hooks in the top. You gotta read that book, dude. Stop putting it off. All right, all right. One, uh, one more. Isn't that Lee Harding CD first, and then, uh, yeah. And then yeah. Fuck. You need to hashtag educate yourself. I really probably, am so. glad I'm Australian, eh? Uh, I'm not, but still. <laughs> yeah. I, look, let me put it this way. I wish... No, actually, I don't even wish that I was South Korean. The fucking dictator party won again. Uh, uh, where do I wish I was? Style, isn't I wish it? I was Chinese. There we go. Yeah, that's just any credibility uh, gone. Uh, 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 South know, Korean. What, what country you do you South think Korean. has politics right? Don't say Scandinavia. I'm not living there. Korea. <laughs> huh? Korea. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Korea fucked it. Why are they fuck it? What they just voted in... Uh, Oh, yeah, they're yeah, Republicans yeah. again, but they're... Isn't this that is this, the difference, they, right? Haven't they always done that? Hmm? Isn't that? Haven't they always done that? No, all the time. The last one was the left-wing government. Oh. And he was amazing. Samsung. He was an incredible Fuck. president. And also, having said that, because of, he bucked the trend so much and put Korea on such a good path, especially even during COVID, that the press-preferred party, which is the dictator's party, 
airily. I looked at the votes. I've never seen closer votes in my really? entire life. It was Shit. a fucking razor. Really? Razor. And I am actually kind of optimistic that he will lose the next election, which is just a mere six years away. <laughs> what is that how long the I like terms those terms. country? Yeah. Why? Any country that always had a dictator in the end, they're just like uh, they put the terms up to 15 years before next elections. Yes, Whoa. so I'm, you know, I'm not the president for life, but the president for working life. <laughs> <laughs> the world is fucking trippy, dude. Yeah, I really don't understand. Like, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't maybe Bhutan? Bhutan seems... But it's just, again, like, just this tiny little thumbprint in the middle of the Himalayas. Great. Yeah. Nepal. I got a lot of earthquakes. Queensland, succeed. I'll live there. Queensland, yeah, yeah, fair, fair. It gets hot up there though, mighty hot. Yeah, all right. Well, then I'm back to square one. Thanks, Miss. <laughs> Where do I go? I'm